for some unrighteousness, but Christ is going to be a problem for you. Then you start making up tales of, oh, it was just made up. Because you can't find anything. But y'all, today I listen to today is called Kingdom Life. You hear a lot of other things out here today. Thug life. <laughs> this life. All the other tough lives. But when you talk about Kingdom Life, no, you, you can't compare it to the things of this world in a sense that you can't compare no unrighteous thing with it. This is kingdom life, y'all, what he just read in Psalm 92. There is no unrighteousness in it. So that means that if you say, this is the way I feel, I know it's wrong, but you cannot have kingdom life with that thought process. Because that makes the kingdom just like what we already in, ain't it? Yeah. So y'all are gonna get right to the heart of the matter and understand the difference and understand what Christ was saying he went away to prepare for us. And we have to understand we're gonna deal with what so we can get right to the heart of the matter, what came in. So we're gonna get that out the way first. So now your mindset should be on what did it take for me to have kingdom life. Mm. Y'all, you read in here, there's the kingdom of God, and then there's the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Are they different? I'm going to cover a little bit of that too. Because they're all one and the same, but everything has its dispensation. So y'all, we're going to start off right in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6, we're going to start around verse 9. Y'all, because just the first thing, once we get these things understood and what they are and what can't dwell there, then we'll have a clear understanding. And immediately after this, we're going to get, because everything we read here is going to be transgression against what God approves of. If, if you don't want to say breaking his law, if we use the terms of what he don't like, what he despised, then we still going to have to get back to where it can be understood on why he feels that way about things. His thoughts are way higher than our thoughts. Mm. So I don't need us talking about the Lord in my heart. The bottom line is you need to know the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are the fix. Let's get it. All right, All right. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, we're going to start the ninth verse. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So right here we're talking the kingdom of God. Inheritance. That's what it is, y'all. That's what this whole process is about. So that you may inherit eternal life. It's a gift that's been left for you by your father. So that's an inheritance, y'all. That's what we're going to get to understand it for. We're going to talk about those treasures that you found up to be a part of an inheritance. When people leave something for you, they trust that you're going to do the right thing with it. Yeah, right. Because if they're leaving an inheritance for you, it's, they're saying, I'm going on. But this I have left for you because you well deserved it. It ain't nothing you've done special me. The things we talked about, the things we discussed, you deserve an inheritance. <coughs> Be not deceived. Be what? Be not deceived. This word comes up all the time. Christ used it 
over and over and over again. And this follower of Christ, Paul, is using it over and over and over again. If he's saying be not deceived, then there must be something there that will prevent us from being deceived. Unless we want it to be deceived. Because we got scripts in here that we choose to believe by. That's a major difference than somebody tricking you into something. When you choose to believe a lie has been proven to be a lie, you say, well, I'm going to stand on it anyway. Mm. Go ahead, brother. Be not deceived, right? Neither fornicate. Neither what? Fornicate. So we know that what fornication is, it's what we would call intercourse against God, both spiritual and physical. <coughs> Unrighteous intercourse. Yeah. And what we're talking about, intercourse just don't mean the physical thing we're talking about. You can have intercourse in a conversation. Yeah. Not always about naughty nothings. <laughs> when you hear it talk about wisdom, keep her in your bosom like a woman. Then you understand what it's saying. It's not talking because you can't think of the Holy Spirit in that nature. Mm. Go ahead, brother. Neither fornicate, right? Nor idolatry. Nor what? Idolatry. Okay. Nor adultery. Oh. Nor effeminate. Nor e what? Effeminate. And if we go into them things, this is one that's being legalized today. Effeminate. Y'all, when we talk about that, you look that up, they're going to say of woman qualities. Mm -hmm. A man of woman qualities. Mm -hmm. Right. Feminine. Mm -hmm. Soft. Mm -hmm. Soft and tough. <laughs> <laughs> you look that up, bro, you do too. But, y'all, the only reason we are going into this one versus the others is because this one has been legalized by this nation. And it's sweeping through all of the kingdoms of the earth. So y'all, y'all, we want to understand it's not a pound out on this one uh, up front. We we'll just let you know it's starting with this one, and the next one's gonna be legalized because it's going to mirror Sodom and Gomorrah. That's right. This is the beginning of what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah that first comes to your mind. The other idol worship, everything was going on. You get into the book of Jasher, and you talking about. What went on in Sodom and Gomorrah, it was out of control. It was corrupt law systems, corrupt judges, payoffs. Right along with the Sodom. Absolutely. Like it wasn't just the Sodom that was going on, but it's a whole society of victims. Not only that, but five more cities yeah. right around them. It wasn't just Sodom and Gomorrah, it was five other cities surrounding it. And Call them in the same wickedness. The neighboring cities thereof. The neighboring cities thereof. Let's get it. No abusers of themselves with mankind. No what? Abusers of themselves with mankind. So y'all, if you abuse yourself with mankind, and you get into what mankind likes to do, don't get into some Ecclesiastes to let us know the mindset of mankind. Mm. When you abuse yourself with mankind, we're going to see that it's pure wickedness. When you abuse yourself with wickedness, you think you can do that and walk into the case and smile and shake hands with who? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, pray. Finish that. First thing, uh -huh. nor thieves, nor, nor, what? nor thieves, right? Nor covets, right? Nor drunk, right? Nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit. The kingdom of God. See, it, it's plain and clear. It's telling you, you can't be on the inheritance <laughs> list. I don't care where the paperwork come out. When the paperwork's out of your name and the inheritance list is called the book of life. Mm. That's where your name must be found that you are the inheritor of this gift. What you got, brother? Did you want to read that? Yeah, yeah. that? I got um, effeminate in the um, American Dictionary. Having the quality associated with women. With what? With women. Uh-huh. Not characteristics of or befitting a man. Uh -huh. Unmanly. Mm -hmm. Characteristics, secondly. Uh -huh. Characterized by softness, uh -huh. weakness, uh 
right. or lack of force, not dynamic or vigorous. Mm. Right? They got so, three so, separate. Uh, uh, a, a feminine man, basically. Yeah. Somebody, someone is soft. Go ahead, uh, you were here. Revival. Just comes out of control. Bear false witness creates mischief. Mm -hmm. A mischief maker. See, uh, when Michael came to get the body of, of Moses, when you read the book of Jesus right before Revelation, he said he heard no uh, rattling accusations at Satan about it. He just said, get out of the way. You know the deal. I come to get Moses' body. Now, we ain't got to repeat what happened when we flew you out of heaven, do we? We got to go through that. <laughs> and he said he didn't have to call them a bunch of names. So, in like sense, this scripture does not give you license to cuss out of Satan. <laughs> all it tells you, all you have to tell him is get behind me. Right. 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 All of that talking tough with him, and he just stared at that smile. Oh, you tough talking in front of your partners, okay? <laughs> well, I'm going to see what you're going to do when I visit you in your dreams later on. We're going to see how tough you is, Mr. When somebody have to come in and click the lights on you, pack and sweat, and then kick the covers up on the ceiling fan blade. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tough Guy, y'all have to understand this is a spiritual war. Yeah. So Satan attacks in your dream. And when we study all of the scriptures, since the Most High speak to you in dream, we have to be on guard in our dream. You cannot sin while you're asleep. <laughs> You can't have fun with the devil while you sleep and then wake up stretch. Ooh, glad that was a dream. <laughs> if he knew that's the way I felt about this woman, ooh, good, that was a dream. <laughs> no. Clean your dreams up. Go ahead, bro. Where we at? Okay. Um, Y'all write this down, Isaiah 3 and 9. Uh -huh. You prophesied about this. Um, it says, the show of their countenance does witness against them. And they declare their sin as soft. Right. They hid it not. Right. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. So again, it shows, like it says here in Isaiah, that, you know, the reason I say we speak of them because it became legalized. You see what I'm saying? It said that they would show their wickedness. It would be a witness against them as it was in Sodom, and they don't even hide it. Right, it just, so there's no shame. No shame. No shame. It's, it's, called, it's called gay pride. Right. Right. There ain't no hiding. Right. 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 right in front of your face. I'm not ashamed of feeling this way, y'all. So, like I say, this is not a pound out on this one. We're just talking about one that's legalized to get you ready for what you're dealing with. They are coming right out at the jump. Right with a left hook to your face and put it right in your face and let you see it. everything else gonna filter down from that. Right. But you are going to see some things on another level with this going on. But y'all, a lot of times, you know, we get to understand that well, you know, they could have been born that way. It's been like that since they was a, a little baby. But there's something called the Klein filter syndrome. You know, down here we get into a little DNA, a woman. Is XY, no, XX, I'm sorry, XX in her DNA, a man is XY. 46 chromosomes from each side of the man and the woman make up this child. 46 total. Now, a lot of times you have that 47 cell or gene or whatever you want to call it, but it's a mutation. Normally, Down syndrome is a 47 cell or extra gene from one or two of the other parents. So doing the Klein filter syndrome, if anybody, we can't get the internet up out here, look like that, that cable has been disconnected. So y'all make sure y'all write that down and study this because this gonna come up when the terms of talking about it could be genetic from birth. When you look up Klein filter syndrome, it's gonna say there's an extra Y or an extra X. There's an extra uh, Y on, on, there's an XX and then a Y for a woman. Then there's a Y, uh, uh, XX and a Y for a man. So what it's saying is there's a possibility that effeminate could be called by, yeah, that's about yeah, yeah. Look, can y'all pull up the internet? I want to just pull up client filter center. But what we're talking about within this, 
with that extra mutated DNA device. Everything you're going to read on Klein Feather Talks, this is going to come up. Well, how can your God put down uh, effeminate when the Klein Felter syndrome is out there to do it? But when you study Klein Felter, it has nothing at all to do with the thought in the mind or changing a man to think that he's male and he's female or to act that way. Most of it don't show itself till after puberty, so that kills the young children, the young that he was born that way. And he was doing that young. And most of it say they'll be extremely tall. And for women, it's on both sides. It almost does, it may show some fatty tissue or something like that as they get older. But nothing changes the thought process to make a man look at another man through the Kleinfelter syndrome. But y'all, this is something very important because when we talk about XY, XX, the DNA or something, this is going to come up and that's a mutated gene. And guess you know what the kicker is? Most of them are sterile. They can't reproduce. The Most High is not going to let mutant genes reproduce to a point where they can start a whole nother race. What you got, brother? He got it in his regard. I read a little bit. It says having an extra X um, chromosome. Right. So instead of being XY, it's XXY. So, y'all, they may come with that to try to battle what Christ just said you can't get in the kingdom for, but you, you got to come up yeah. and read just a little bit of it. Just a little bit of it. Um, the Klein Felter syndrome is a genetic condition that results when a boy is born with an extra copy of the X chromosome. Right. The Klein, the Klein Felter syndrome is a common genetic condition that affecting males. Um, the Klein Felter syndrome adversely affects the testicular growth. What it affects? The testicular growth. So it, it obstructs a man's stones. He got the sweet piece in it. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> <laughs> And this can result in smaller than normal testicles. This can lead to a lower production of the sex hormone testosterone. What, is it, what, what does it create? A, a less, lower production of sexual hormone testosterone. So right now, we got to make sure that this is not causing them to be effeminate mm. or male qualities that we just talked about. Less testosterone. Does that mean this is affecting his role? Does it? And they go in that way too. What that means is it reduces his muscle mass, his um, body and facial hair, and enlarges breast tissue. So Risperdal is doing that now from yeah. that pharmaceutical. So y'all, y'all have to understand. Uh, all of that y'all see, these were designed to help with those things, pharmaceutical. That's why y'all, we cannot put nobody on this for life. If there's something that they say, look, this will calm this down or this will put a patch on it, but you cannot mentally or physically be dependent on anything but the word of the Most High. That's right. What else you got about that? that that'll be Y'all read that on your own time, but y'all understand it clearly. When it gets down to about puberty and different things, it does not affect a man to the point that where a man with less muscle mass ain't Rule like a lion. Right. You know, when it says soft, soft is carrot. Everything about a family. He likes the way a woman moves, so he moves like her. So it's still saying a choice of that. He don't like the way his daddy rule, so he speaks like his mother. Uh, so y'all, we have to understand, we have to be extra careful concerning those things. That's right. Because we know in Proverbs 31, the woman is teaching her son, you got to be a man. And the first thing she start off with is, do not give your strength to a woman. Yeah. So spiritually, don't let a woman turn you into the sweet peas. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> it's starting off, and that's his mother teaching. So y'all, we know it must be a talk process if Klein felt it is on you. But it's a genetic mutation, but cannot cause you to choose, or you can blame it on the most high you know, that this is affecting me. Because it could have been something the mother or father was doing. When we read about Samson, when we read about Mary's mother, the angel told them, do not let this come into your bloodstream, 
Do not let that come into your bloodstream. Number six chapters talks about the, the rights of a Nazarite. This cannot come into your bloodstream. Everything the mother eats goes from the umbilical cord to the baby. So there could be a lot of people, women are taking fertility pills. May want twins. I told my mom, yeah, how many? Eight out of this year. Yeah. Load it up with fertility drugs. Yeah. No, she admitted I haven't been taking them. I got a whole litter instead of twins. She up in puppy levels. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have, well, we can hold on there. Verse 11, back to the verse 11. Verse 11, verse 3, verse 6, verse 11. What does it say? And such was some of you. And such was what? Some of you. But ye are what? See, we are what? But ye are what? So right here, Paul is telling you that you're washed. This lets you know that if you had any of the transgressions on you and you were washed, that don't mean you can continue in them. Exactly. You can't think once saved, always saved. Right, oh, right, once right. you wash, you can't go get dirty again right. and think you still clean. What you have, Jay? Um, one thing you said about that physician, um, I came across this, uh, um, a guy named William um, Oscar, uh -huh. who was described as the father of modern medicine here in the West. From 1849 to 1919, he said one of the first duties of a physician is to educate the masses not to take medicine. Right. Mm -hmm. Not Y'all, but once y'all, we got to understand, we want y'all to always understand down here. Look, if it's already causing damage, and you go to a physician and they say you need to do this, look, every time they give you medicine, they are ordered to give you the diet. So they're telling you what's causing your problem is what you put in your mouth. Right, right. There's no doctor that don't give a, give a prescription and don't tell you start eating like this. You got to change that with that, and then you can get rid of this. But what do we do? Ball up that diet. I know damn well, he think I'm getting paid. No chillings. No chillings. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Thanks for next week. Go <laughs> get my medicine, gentlemen. Right, right, right. So I can eat my chillings. Yeah. That's what you can't do about medicine. We're not telling you. Don't tell you because we understood different roots and different things. We had pharmacists that worked for us. Apothecary. Apothecary that knew what we needed. How do you think we was living to 175? 365 years old. What you got, Jay? You know, another thing, too, a lot of us did not, <clears throat> didn't realize when, when I was studying the history, you know, doing my African American studies, that the slave master were often called. The, the, the slave woman to come in medicine and, and heal him because she had the knowledge of the herbs and stuff like that to heal him. So he wouldn't go to a physician. That's why he may only have like maybe one physician per time. Right. You see what I'm saying? And I could eat man, you know, take it all the time. They usually use they slave, the women slave, you know, what we would call, I guess, a uh, big mom or something like that. Right. And he would, she would get away. That's right. We we'll get big mom in those remedies. And those remedies. Right. Yeah, it blew my mind. All right, we at verse 11. Yes, verse 11. 11. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 11. And such was some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Yahushua, Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. So that's what washes you from any of what we just read in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Mm -hmm. It has to be the washing of the word to sanctify you. If somebody is saying anything is done away and it's been okay, then all we ask is work has it been washed and sanctified. Mm. That's what we want to know. Look, I mean, how do you, when you're putting on fresh clothes every day, you think your temple could be this way? Right. You, you know, you have to look at this. We're talking about the inside of you more than the outside. You can't have this, the, the same thought process when you're talking about going into kingdom life that we have for ourselves. Look, you have a pair of jeans on two days, three days in a row, and it's not like it is out there. You know if you have to smell the rear end of the jeans to see if they're clean. No. This don't hurt. Oh, who you tricking? Yeah, it's cool. Won't do that. So in like manner, you can't have the smell your 
transgression and say, oh, it's just a little bit of that. God ain't going to mind. Right, right. He'll let me in. I take it to We can all let laugh. Let's get this Ecclesiastic chapter 4. Because we, we want to get right to, to get our minds wrapped around so you can know what's plaguing you. What the stronghold may be on you. That you can get that cleaned up, get that sanctified, and get that washed. So that you can enjoy kingdom life. Look what Pop told Kato. Kato keep it popping up there for us. You think it's going to be popping bottles and there'll be wine flowing. And two pockets. But what Kato was doing got him taking the dirt down, don't he? I wonder if heaven got to go. No. On the other side of that gulf is the ghetto. <laughs> Christ stripped Adam and Eve 
of that heavenly garment that we're talking about that you have to have on to live kingdom life. He at least gave them another garment, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't he leave them destitute in that? Right here in the script in Genesis say he replaced that clothing with carnal clothing for hard work, which we're going to go into this Ecclesiastic 4.